Well, hi there, everyone. My name is Scott Nicholson, and I'm a professor here at Wilfrid Laurier University on the Brantford campus, and I'm also the director of the Game Design and Development Program. And I'm here to talk a little bit about that program, what it is, how it's different from other programs, uh, why you might want to get involved, and what it's going to help you to do. Now, when you talk about games, you probably think of video games, think of digital games. But you know, there's a lot more out there in gaming than just digital games. There's board games and card games, kind of like what you see behind me here. Uh, this is actually in, in my basement, but the game lab that we have at school looks an awful li lot like this. I've got about half of my own board games here and about half of my games there at school. And so board games are one of the things that I'm really focused on. There's also role-playing games, uh, tabletop role-playing games and indie role-playing games where you're telling stories and creating stories together with other people. And live action games. Live action games have grown in popularity over the last few years with escape rooms. Escape rooms are the other area I focus on quite a bit. And in fact, the picture you see here is a the, one of the final puzzles in a Red Bull Escape Room World Championship. And we designed this puzzle, as well as many others, at the lab in Brantford. Uh, you can go to redbull.tv and search on escape rooms, and you'll see the shows that, that we created uh, for Red Bull. And so we focus on all kinds of gaming. We also look at gameful and playful design. Now what this is is the idea of taking concepts from gaming and using it in other things, using it to motivate people to, to help them learn about things, to help them engage with things. You might have heard of the term gamification. Well, that is what this is, um, but we don't care for that term so much because it's a fairly term about controlling people and we don't like that. Um, so we prefer gameful design. The idea is that we're focused on being playful and being gameful. Now, it's, I find it's useful to talk about what we're not, because a lot of people come in and because game studies as a field is new, everyone's figuring out their own take on it. And so I want to talk about what we're not. So the first thing, we're not game studies. So there's programs that are game studies programs and programs that are game design programs. Um, I'll, I'll give you a comparison in film. So film studies versus filmmaking. So people that are in film studies are looking at films. They're trying to understand that the role those films had in society, looking at designers and patterns in film, but they're not actually learning how to make film. Film making are about the people that are learning the craft of making film, and that's what we are. We're game design, and we're focused on the craft of designing games. Now, you will do some game studies in our program. That's something that, that you do some of, but that's not the focus. The focus is on you making things. We're also not focused on game programming. So a lot of people, may they mix up game design and game programming. And the comparison I like to use here is the difference between being an architect and uh, working on a construction team. So the architect plans things out. They do a lot of work before anything is built. They draw out plans and ideas. They understand what kind of buildings are going to serve what kind of purposes. And they're able to bring from that knowledge, bring that together, put together this, uh, the, these blueprints and these documents. And then they work with the construction team who builds their thing out for them. And it's the same concept here. So game programming is a tool. It's one aspect of what it takes to make a game. But you can't do programming until you've done design. Just like you can't just grab a hammer and wood and nails and start building walls and hope that you have a house. Same thing is true with game, with game design. You have to design the game first and then you can start to programming it. So game programmers are the people that are focused on that building side. Now you'll do some of that. We have several courses where you do game programming because you do need to learn some of the tools to make your games. But it's not our focus here. What we are focused on is the concept of making play meaningful. This is our phrase for all of the game design type things we do at Laurier. So we do that in a couple different ways. Uh, we have our Bachelor of Fine Arts degree program, which we're talking about now. And we also have the, the Begin Lab, the, the Brantford Games Network Lab, where we work with organizations to make games. And through both of these, we're always seeking to create play that is meaningful to the player. So our perspective through everything we do is that games as forms of art convey values. So we're a Bachelor of Fine and Applied Arts. We see games as a form of art. And just like any form of art that's out there, there are values that the artist has had in their mind and are conveying through the art they are creating. And games do the same thing. And we really focus on this. We really want you to think about your own values and the values you're going to bring to the table and the values you want to convey with the games that you make. I'll give you an example. 
Now, you may have heard of this game, Monopoly. Um, as you see, Monopoly is a game that's been around for decades. Um, and if you look at this game and think about what are the values behind Monopoly. So if you, what does Monopoly celebrate? And that's what we look at when we look at the values that, that games are built on. We look to see what are the values that the game celebrates. Well, we can see here in Monopoly Ultimate Banking Edition that it says there, own it all. The value is right there on the board. That is what they are celebrating, owning everything. This is what Monopoly celebrates. And you may think, well, that, that maybe doesn't sound so good. And that's because Monopoly actually started life as a game called the Landlord's Game. And the idea of the Landlord's Game, it was going to be a demonstration of our current system of land grabbing with all of the outcomes and consequences. And the idea was that you would play the Landlord's Game to understand, oh, if we let things go the way they're going, then there will be a few people that have everything and a lot of people that don't have anything. Yay, you won! Yay! Lizzie Maggie designed Landlord's Game, but it was then stolen and published without her name on it. And there's a whole history of that, which we'll talk about in class. But thinking about the values that are behind the games that we create is something that's really important to us. So what we do is we do value-based critical game design. Value-based means that games convey the values to the players. And they convey the values of the designer and the values of the organization. And that's what we're focused on and what we're making here, value-based games. Um, the, and what we are not focused on is games that celebrate killing people. There's a lot of games out there that the value, the primary value they're promoting is killing other people. And we don't do that here. But there's a lot of other things you can do with games that aren't focused on that. So you're going to think about your own values and how do you put those values into a game. Uh, critical means that we've got games that, that challenge the status quo. Kind of like the original Landlord's game challenged the acceptance that having more stuff is great. We want to create games that get you to question your assumptions, to get you to think about uh, what you believe about the world is, is it right, and to think about that. And we look make games that engage with social problems, that take on something that's going on out there and, and, t and tangle with it. And then we do game design. So game design is it's an engineering process. It's an iterative process. You make, you test, you go back, you make again, you test again, you'll make again and again and again. You'll be able to make a very bad game quickly, but it's through the design and development process where you improve it and improve it and improve it and improve it. That's where the hard work is, and that's where the game gets better and better as you explore. And that's the process you're going to use repeatedly throughout your program here. Our focus is on planning and documentation, so that those starting phases. So we have to figure out what's that game going to do, what are the values it's going to convey, to whom is it going to convey those values, who's the audience, and then what are the mechanisms, what are the verbs that are going to allow us to convey that, and then documenting all that out, and then you start to develop it. And that's where you're trying to bring everything together to make something that is enjoyable. The slogan for our bachelor's degree is play critically, design critically, think critically. This is what you're going to be doing during your four years here. This is our focus. A little bit about the degree. So it's an honors degree. Uh, it's Bachelor of Fine and Applied Arts. It's in the Faculty of Human and Social Sciences. We build it as a portfolio-based degree, and so you'll be always working on projects and classes that will go into your portfolio. And then we end up with the senior capstone as your year-long project at the end of it all. You're going to start in play critically. And what that means is you're going to start by looking at games that you currently play and thinking about them more critically than you do right now. And by critically, we mean thinking about the values those games are conveying. What is the game celebrating? And then you're going to move in, in your first year into Critical Design 1. That's going to focus on analog games. So you're going to start by making card games and board games in your first year. So the first year in the game design side of things, you're going to be playing games critically and you're going to start designing games critically. You're going to have a class on games as art where you're going to look at the role of games in society and games as an art form and what they, that means. Uh, you're going to do pre-production for games, and this is the documentation process we've talked about. So in this process, you're going to learn about what do you have to write up before you even make a game? What are all the elements that you have to document out as, as you uh, start this process? You'll take classes in graphic design. Um, you'll take classes in our Brantford Foundations, and so that's a, that's, you take those over your first two years, and those are going to help you understand and think about 
both how to survive in the academic environment, so two of the classes are about academic skills, and how to look at the world critically. So you're going to be learning about theories and philosophies of people who have critically looked at the world. You'll take classes in cross-media storytelling, um, and then you'll take some electives. You've got some choices. In year two and three, you continue your design path. So now you're going to be moving into digital games. And so in these years, you're going to be going through using Twine, which is a game to create stories. You're going to be using Game Maker, which is a tool to make 2D games. And then you're going to be moving into Unity, which is a game, a tool to make 3D games. You'll take a class on web game design. How do you make games for the web and, and using uh, HTML5? You'll take classes on meaningful interactions. So the idea of that is we talk about making play meaningful. Well, that's what you're doing here is you're actually trying to create interactions that are meaningful for the player. How do you do that in a game? We'll take a class on ethics in game design because if you are conveying values through games, well, there's a lot of ethical issues around that. And so we want you to think about that. Uh, you'll take classes in project management. So, uh, so the project management class, if you choose when you're done with that class, you can sit for one of the project management certifications, and that can line you up for a job in project management after you graduate. You'll take a public speaking class because as the game designer, you have to be the one to present your games. So you'll learn how to pitch your games. You'll be doing a class in our user experience design. Um, and in that, you're going to be doing a class on, on research, user research. Because in order to know if you're making a difference with people, you have to understand how to measure that. And so that's an important part of this. You also have some time during this to take a minor or an option. So you could take a minor in user experience design if you want to focus on that. Uh, English, you could do something in that. You could do something in criminology. You could do in any of our other fields that offer minors and options in leadership. Those are psychology. A lot of our students do that. So those are choices you can have to add in to help you go towards a career. Year four, your primary event is your capstone experience. Now that's half of your coursework in year four. So you're gonna be spending uh, half of your class time in our game lab working with us making a game. And the way that we currently do that is <clears throat> the teams, where you put into teams, you develop and create an indie studio as a brand and develop and release a game. So by the end of year four, you have put out a game with your name on it. It's gonna be out there for people to see. You'll take a class in game entrepreneurship. Uh, there's some other game design electives that come up that you can take during this time, and you'll finish out your minor or option. So that's what the four years look like. What do we do that's well? So we focus on value-based game design. So we don't focus on games that celebrate killing or colonization through play. That's not what we're doing. We're focused on the impact games have on players. We really want to think about how does this game affect people? And that's what we're going to focus on, digital games, analog games, live action, and real world games. And we can think about how to use those games to build community, to use them for informal learning, or to use them for educational purposes. Many schools and museums and libraries are using games, and this program will help you think about how to do that. Um, the project management focus is something that was important to us, because when we looked at what was out there as far as... Uh, jobs in the game industry, we saw that there were jobs in project management. We saw there was a need for people with project management skills. And so that's why you have project management classes and ethics classes and leadership classes and evaluation classes, public speaking. That's all important there. And then we focus on social entrepreneurship. So our entrepreneurial class you take will get you thinking about the values that you're conveying through the games and how you use that to make a difference in society. And that's this concept of social entrepreneurship. So some of the career paths out of this program, we are trying to provide an alternative to the AAA game industry. So the AAA game industry, these are the really big companies. A lot of game design programs in Ontario and not many AAA game industry company jobs. And we recognize that. So we say, all right, that's not our focus. So if you, if you want to go into the AAA game industry, we're not the right place for you. There's other programs out there, and, but we're looking at other places games are being developed and used in society. So the world of indie game design and development, that's one space, and you can do that through taking the entrepreneurship class. We have a launch pad program that you can engage with after graduation. We've had some of our graduates do that, where it helps them get started and helps them start their indie company to be able to make games. You can work on making educational games and applied games. Uh, educational apps are one of the fastest growing areas of app development. A lot of people are turning to that. And so that's something that you'll be able to do is, is think about how to use these skills and apply them to organizations to create games. You can become a gameful designer or consultant. So we talked about that gamification concept earlier. So how do you take game concepts and use it to help people engage with the world in different ways? So 
these are some of the paths that you can explore. The project management actually is a space, if you do want to go into AAA, project management would be a path in because that's something that we saw that there was a need for and not a lot of training for. So that is one path that you could use. We really focus on your soft skills. That's what we hear from the industries out there. They're looking for people with good soft skills. And so these are all things that you're going to be doing during your game design program. You're going to be doing technical and creative writing. And we're a writing heavy program. So you might say, well, we don't do, we don't focus on art, but you do a little bit. We don't focus on programming, but you do a little bit. Well, what do you do? We write. So if you like to write, this is a program for you to consider. If you don't like to write, this is not going to be a good choice for you because we do a lot of writing from the beginning. Um, and so these are skills you're going to develop, your writing skills, you're going to develop things you've written for your portfolio. So that opens up quite a few career paths outside of games. Public speaking. So you'll take a class on public speaking and you will be continually offering up and presenting your games. You'll be pitching your games in classes and in workshops and events and building those public speaking skills. You go through the skills of learning how to brainstorm and rapid prototyping, because that's what we do in game development. But that's a useful skill in anything. The idea of knowing how to facilitate a brainstorm, how to run a brainstorm, how to successfully take ideas from that, how to make something, how to make a minimum viable product and rapidly prototype that, that's a, a big part of what we do. We, we learn about giving feedback and receiving feedback. That's an important part. As a game developer, you need to find people who can look at your game and not just say, oh, it was fun. No, you need people that can actually talk about the game critically, and that's what we do. We develop you as someone that can give critical feedback and can take feedback, because as a game designer, you have to be able to take feedback. And again, these skills are useful in many different industries, in many different jobs. And these are what employers are looking for, is people that can do these things. Project management and time management. So in order to make a game, you have to understand how do you manage milestones? How do you create a time management chart? And how do you do that? How do you do project management? You're going to be doing that in your capstone project. You're taking classes on that. So this is going to be where you're going to develop those skills. And finally, the last point is you're going to learn to think critically. You're going to learn to look at the world that's out there and not just accept what you see, but think critically about it and then learn how to make something that helps people understand this viewpoint that you have about it. I mentioned earlier the Brantford Games Network, the Begin Lab. This is our connection point between Laurier and the community and educators and gamers. Um, so these are the spaces that we have. So this is all in Grand River Hall, which is one of the um, one of the dormitories. And if you have interest in living on campus, I would suggest for you to look at Grand River Hall as where you want to live, because that's where we are. That's where my office is, the other faculty, we have our offices there, our classrooms there, our computer lab is there. This is our home. And so I'd suggest for game design students, if you want to be in the space where we do most of our stuff, go to Grand River Hall. There's a lounge there, so I gave up a third of my game lab to the students, so you'll get 24-7 access to this lounge space, uh, which has screens for you to plug in things, uh, lots of tables for games and, and all that stuff. There's the Begin Lab, and that's where we teach a lot of our classes. We have game jams and community events. And then we have a small R&D space, which has some computers that are a little bit more powerful than com other computers on campus that you'll get access to as one of our students. But all that's in Grand River Hall, so consider living there if you're going to be living on campus. Now, there's several student organizations that you could choose to get involved with. Uh, the GDDSA, the Game Design Development Official Student Organization. So that is the official Laurier organization. They run game tournaments. They do events for Relay for Life. They do game jams with other departments. So it's a chance to engage with students across all four years around both playing and creating games. There is a learning cluster in... Uh, Grand River Hall that are students that want to focus on game design. Now it's not just game design students, uh, but it, it's mostly game design students. And they usually will make a game. They've made a game for Laurier. They've participated in the Extra Life event, which is a fundraiser where you play games for 24 hours. Um, so that's something to consider if you're going to be living on campus and living in Grand River Hall. There's a Laurier-wide student organization called Game On, and that is a weekly open gaming uh, group that's in Brantford that, where you can play games with other students. We also run on many Fridays an event we call Free Play Friday, which is Friday evening, and that is a chance to get together and play games with the community and play games with each other and a great chance to bring games you've been working on to find people to play test them. 
So as I mentioned, the uh, Free Play Friday is one of our events. We will have designer days where we'll invite game designers in to show what they've been working on. We do game jams about once a semester. We do some kind of a game jam to get people engaged. Uh, we have game talks, so regular presentations by game industry professionals. Uh, there's student game fairs, so we will have a game fair where we open it up to people. Um, and then every year we try to have our Games of the Year fair where we bring the best games and show them off to everyone uh, the games we've been working on. So these are some of the events we do there in the lab. Here's a picture of one of these events in action. So what this is, this is the game fair for our analog game design class, so DD102, which is Critical Game Design 1. We invite the public to come in. And so you have a mixture here of people from the public, students from the public, professionals coming in and seeing games that students are making. And so we do this kind of thing quite frequently. This space that you see here is our Begin Lab. This is where a lot of your classes will be held in this room. This is a picture of one of our jams that we did. So in this, what we did is we brought along teachers who had a desire to create an escape box for their students. So what you see there is a box. It's got locks on it. The students are creating puzzles. So over two days, they worked with the teachers to develop a set of puzzles. Uh, this is a playtesting time where people are testing the puzzles that the other groups have made. And so we do these kind of game jams quite often. Now, these jams led to, as I mentioned earlier, the Red Bull Mind Gamers uh, Escape Room World Championships. So they funded us to hire a team of students to develop all the challenges for this. And this ran in 2017 and again in 2019. And that was a pretty crazy time of making games that ended up going on Red Bull TV. So you can still see that show there. We do game jams, as I mentioned earlier, for government organizations. This was the climate change game jam. So what we did for this is we brought together students from uh, many different schools in the area, and we made games around climate change. And then we funded students over the summer to make games. Most summers, we have projects where you can be paid to make games. So why would you want to come here? Well. You'd want to come here if you wanted to focus more on design and narrative, more than programming and art. If you want to be a programmer or you want to be an artist, we're not the right pick for you. If you want to be more on the writing, more on the design, more on the narrative side of things, then, then you want to take a look at what we do. If you recognize that it's important to convey values through games and you want to create games that convey values, and you're interested in making games that use verbs that aren't kill, uh, this is a place to look at. This is what we focus on. This is what we're doing. So if you want to go beyond AAA, then you want to take a look at us. Do a little research. If you think you want to go work for the big video game companies, do a little research about what it's like to work in the AAA industry. There's a lot of articles that have been written out there. And make your own decision if that's where you want to go. If that doesn't sound very appealing to you, then take a look at what we do. Finally, if you want to inspire lives. Now, that's Laurier's slogan, is inspiring lives. And that's our goal. Our goal is to inspire you to want to make games to inspire others. And that's what we're trying to do. So if you like that idea of making games based on values that inspire others, then consider joining us here at Laurier. So if you're interested, I'd be happy to see your application and perhaps see you in the fall. Take care, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.